Pardon the interruption, I'm Dan Sharis, and sorry fans, we didn't do our justice today. We got the one year anniversary of the show, didn't break out the crinkle trend. This is one the one year anniversary? Yeah, pretty much. Did not, not know that. Date. Not didn't the exact date. Yeah, no, I, I, all right, I didn't know that we were even close to a year. Oh yeah, but it's been a year. Pardon the interruption, I'm Jared Ware, and I just learned something new about this show today. So happy one year anniversary to all the people here at Anchor TV for uh, getting the show off the ground, Some getting it going, and now it's a weekly thing. It used to be bi-weekly back then. You, you'll see those ads on Anchor TV, which is just you yep. sitting in front of the yep. like city parana- pa- panorama. Yep. What a year it's been. So uh, the hashtag today. Yep. If you can't tell, it's Throwback Thursday. You will be able to tell as soon as those graphics are gone off the screen that Dan is wearing some throwback attire. Uh, you from want me to, the, yeah, break from, the picture from the up. days, I, I'm, I'm throwback Thursday in it. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this picture, but that's my dad, Dave Cherist, on the left. On the on the right, on your right, on my left. And uh, I got the same attire that he wore in his in his early 70s when he graduated from Rhode Island College. Yeah. Former baseball player. Interesting, interesting, interesting choice. With the cause. I'm sure you all wanted to know who this guy, uh, this other guy in there is. Yeah. The cats. All right, let's get right into it today. Ten topics, as always. So, last Saturday, LEC tournament, we talked about our preview. I said the men would win the tournament. They did against Keene. I said the women would win the tournament in the final against Dartmouth. That didn't happen. No, nope, not quite. Southern Maine at home got the job done. Dartmouth did make the finals, got blown out, lost 90-66. to 66. So, anchor men in the tournament, anchor women out. Let's look back on Saturday. Let's look forward to this Saturday as the Hobart Statesmen come down to take on the Anchorman in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Uh, first, I got to say is congratulations. You know, conference yeah. champs, it's, it's yeah. a pretty cool thing. And uh, there's 42 conferences, and there's only 20 at-large bids. So it's, yeah. it's a little different here in Division Three. You pretty yeah. much got to win your conference. Rick would have got in regardless. Whatever. But, uh, you know, Rick, I was um, – I, I thought they were going to be playing better last yeah. week. I, I really thought – the defense showed up, but the offense just wasn't there. Defense all year has been great. But this week against Hobart, I think the home court advantage will play a key role into this game. And I think Rick, you know, I think they're going to get it done, send themselves on to the round of 32, which also would be here next week. Yes. Yeah, so it's a little different. The, the men's, they want to keep it on pace with the Division One, so they play every, every weekend. The women, they play. It's much quicker. They're done yeah. by the end of – they'll be done – Sooner than the men, let's just say that. Yep. So in the men, uh, just looking back Saturday, I have to say again, I'm right there with you. I was there for the finals of the LEC tournament and that Tuesday game. Wasn't overly impressed with either of those two performances, but you win the game, you win the conference, you make it to the NCAA tournament, you get yourself a week off, iron out some of the problems that you have, just mentally get ready for the NCAA tournament. Everyone's obviously going to step up for that. So you have to say congratulations to them. Looking forward, it's a good matchup. You gotta like their section of the bracket. Now, I'm not one of the people on campus right now who's already chalking them into the final four because their bracket. We don't really know any of the other teams. No one on campus really knows what what Hobart has in store, what a Ramapo has in store, what any of the other schools in their subsection of the bracket. We don't really know what those teams are all about. We know the LAC. We know the teams that in this region, the Amherst, the Williams teams like that. So. It's, it looks on paper like a nice draw, but it's the NCAA tournament. Anyone can beat anyone. Yep. 40 minutes of basketball, you play a bad half, you could be out, you could be, you know. And then, plus, it teams that just yeah. chuck threes. I don't know how this yeah, team exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. I know this team doesn't have a lot of size like Rick. Yeah. I think that's going to be a downfall to this yeah. Rhode Island College team. They don't, you saw Keene well. State last. Didn't rebound well well, against Rick, Keene State. Rick didn't usually rebound well rebounds pretty well because UMass they miss Starbucks. a lot of layups and they just get them second chance They points. didn't rebound well Tuesday, Saturday. But but the thing with, like, Keene State had, like, three guys, 6'9", six, 6'11", six, yep. seven foot. And you're going to get that and, once yeah. you get into the Sweet 16 Elite Eight Final Four. You're going to get some big boys on the even, court. Even when MIT, MIT came yes, there, exactly. they, had, they had a lot of guys that, that had some height. And that's a potential round of 16 matchup. Yeah, also, so I, have cool. to, I also have to shout out. Tariq Carter, first team LEC, LEC player of the year, LEC defensive player of the year, Court Burns, LEC first team, Vandal Andre, all rookie team. I believe Chris Burton also was second defense. Second team? Second I team think he might have been defense. second team and defense all defense team. Obviously Tariq and Carter. Bob on Walsh. There. Bob Walsh, coach of the year. So a lot of postseason accolades flying around both programs. Pretty good seasons for both. Uh, I think the the women, obviously I had them in the NCAA tournament, but I think they had a pretty solid year. The men, we had them in the NCAA tournament. 
Let's see how far they can go. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. Let's see what's going to happen here uh, in, in the next couple weeks. It should be exciting here around campus. So, moving from D3 to D1, where no one wants to be number one. What's going on right now in college hoops? Well, right now, everyone's losing. Indiana yeah. loses. Uh, Duke, Florida, all these teams are losing. Look who keeps winning. The Gonzaga Bulldogs. Yep. My, my Gonzaga Bulldogs out there in Spokane, Washington, always play a brutal non-conference schedule. Absolutely brutal. They lost to Illinois because Brandon Paul went nuts. Illinois is pretty terrible in the Big Ten right yep. now. Uh, and then they lost that one-point thriller that they should not have lost at Butler, which is one of the one of the cooler basketball yeah. venues, uh, I think, is uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse. Yep. It's fun to say. I Sorry. think a lot of people would agree with you. Hinkle Fieldhouse. Yep. Pretty cool to say. And so they just keep winning. The West Coast Conference, not the greatest conference, but they typically will get at least two bids yeah. because St. Mary's is a good team yep. that always gets in. And BYU now is in the conference. That's a tough game. Gonzaga-BYU tonight. Uh, they already beat St. Mary's, the toughest team, twice. Killed them both times. So they'll probably be playing each other in the West Coast Conference Finals. That tournament starts next week. And you got to expect Gonzaga to, to run the table. If that's the case, hello, number one seed. And if we want to go nuts, overall number one seed, but I don't think it matters at yep. that point. Just get the just get a one seed. They'll be in the West region. They can stay at West because they usually have to go East. They Last year, come to Pittsburgh. And if they won that, they would have to go to Boston. Yep. A couple years ago, they have to go to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Lost to Davidson. That was like five years ago. But yep. still, you get the point. They usually have to go East. Yep. Now, stay West. Got one of the more balanced teams in the country. They got Kelly Olenek, the seven-footer. Most improved player of the year. He's seven-foot. Red-shirted last year. Was a skinny guy who only took threes two years ago. Now, he can still take those threes. He can dribble. He can sh he can play inside. He's a monster. He has long hair like I do. Yep. Kevin Pangos, John Stockton's son, David Stockton. They like to show David Stockton in the stands. Or John Stockton in the stands. Yep. Love, love showing him. At least twice, yep. at least two John Stockton references a game. So I got Gonzaga yeah, this, doing some things. This, this season has been outrageous, to say the least, because it seems like every week there's a new number one. It's been insane. This, Specifically, who, you have to look at the Big the Ten. Year? It's, I saw they were talking about Victor Oladipo and Otto Porter from Georgetown. Oladipo from Indiana were the two guys that I saw at halftime that they were talking about. But you got to look specifically at the Big Ten first. That's a great conference this year. Yeah, I think it's a great conference this year. Good, A lot of good teams, a lot of depth. These Obviously, teams are beating each other every week. Michigan, yeah. Michigan State, Ohio State, Wisconsin. Uh, Indiana, Minnesota, sl slipping in, upsetting teams all over the place. So the Big Ten, it'll be interesting Interesting to see how many bids they get. A lot of good teams in that conference. Should oh, be a good oh, conference the, tournament. The NCAA tournament loves the Big Ten. Absolutely loves them. Two years ago, then you Penn got, State was 8-10. and ten, then got you, got, you cannot be in the NCAA tournament if you can't finish 500. This is one of the original debates on PTR. Sorry. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's fine. Um, but as you mentioned, you got the ACC this year. I wouldn't say a down year, but... Not as good as they usually are, and, and Miami's come out of nowhere, played pretty good basketball. They were close to the number one spot. They lost the ball game. So it, this this NCAA tournament is going to be great. There's going to be a lot of great matchups starting day one and moving throughout the tournament. I have no idea who's going to win this thing. Up in the air, like Gonzaga, like Mark Few. I, when I was Googling images for Mark Few, reminded me a lot of Bob Walsh. The same sort of stances, yeah, same yeah, sort yeah. of look, not huge guys. Kind of that dry sense of humor when you talk to them, so... They just reminded me of each other while I was doing that. That's yeah. that's all I have. It could there. be a cool NCAA tournament because oh, usually yeah. we see all the, uh, it's the top seeds, you know. Yeah. Especially this'll, in this'll the women's nuts. tournament. Remember oh, when we yeah. talked about the women's tournament last year? If you're year? the one seed in the women's tournament, you're in the final four. Yeah. Like automatically. It's it's awful. Yeah, terrible, terrible tournament. But they do have the cooler courts. They have awesome courts in the women's final four, whereas the men's final four is just play play on this thing. We talked about that before in the it's, it's been brought up. I did Next topic. That's all I'll say. All right, Jared. Tom Brady inked a new deal. Extension. He's going to stay till 40. I think I know what you're going to say, but why don't you just go ahead Who and cares? say it. Who cares? Like, there's, I've, I say this every time we talk about Tom Brady. Eventually, we got to move on. I don't know. There's, He wants to play until he's like 40. My thing, I want you to win, first off, which he's done a decent job in the regular season, not the same guy in the playoffs. You just got to win in the, you know, I think eventually we should move on. And when I say eventually, I mean sooner rather than later. So sign this deal, free up some cap space, able to make some moves. He's helping the team out, all this good stuff. So that's nice for this year. Yeah. But let's not act like this extension is like, all right, we got six, seven more years of Tom Brady. We don't. 
And if we do, we're going to be awful the, probably the next four years, the final four years of that deal. So let's all calm down a little bit with this deal. Good that he frees up some cap space because we need to make some moves. We need to be aggressive this offseason. Maybe grab a good free agent, pick someone up nice in the draft. I don't, I don't think we're going to move up in the draft, but make a good pick. I would prefer them to make a first-round pick this year because this year has the writings of we're just going to move out of the first round and go to the second round and take guys like Patrick Chung and Ron Brace who are awful. So yeah. stay in the first round. Draft someone, make a statement in free agency, keep moving forwards. Yeah, I mean, everyone's going nuts. I, I yeah. like the deal because I like Tom Brady. Some people, like this guy, don't like Tom Brady, but don't. But don't. Like him and don't like him. Love, hate. So I like the deal. Tom Brady, you got to keep the guy, I think. Ryan Mallon, I guess that's good to know you good to have you on our bench for the next two yeah. seasons then we'll probably just let you go to free agency maybe try to trade yeah, he'll, he he'll, will probably be gone i've pretty much given up on the mallet thing haven't yeah. given up on getting rid of brady but have given up on the mallet situation yeah so mallet mallet's pretty much pretty much toast yeah. but i like the deal yeah frees up cap space get brady till he's 40 i think he's gonna be good for another three years so you got three more years to hopefully win a championship one of these years tom brady you also got to play good in the playoffs too that's what I gotta say. Like the deal. Okay. I like Brady. Probably my favorite Boston athlete at this moment. Okay. All right. All right. We're sticking with quarterbacks here, actually, for the next two topics. Ooh. Alex Smith traded to the Chiefs, two second rounders. Good deal for the Chiefs. Good deal for the Niners. Do you think? Can he help the Chiefs? A bunch of different sub questions in this topic here. Um. First of all, I liked Matt Castle when he was in New England. Seems like he's gonna be riding the Pine Pony or just out of town. So maybe we can pick maybe we can pick him up as the backup again. That would be awful. <laughs> uh, anyways, Alex Smith to the Chiefs. I don't think Alex Smith is as good as everyone says he is. He won 13 games last year. Very nice. He was leading the league in passing efficiency or something something stupid this year, and had a pretty good record himself until Colin Kaepernick came in because he got a concussion. I don't know how much it's going to help this Chiefs team out. I think they're obviously going to improve from the two wins or whatever they had last yep. year. I think they'll probably get like seven wins. But this division still belongs to the Broncos. So this team's not going to be making the playoffs. Brady Quinn, now he's out. He's going to be out in Kansas City. So is it a great deal? They got a better quarterback. So you gotta, yeah. you got to commend them on that. Because yeah. their quarterbacks before, Matt Castle, Brady Quinn, Tyler Thigpen, if you want to throw that name out there. Yeah. If you even want to go way back, you could say Brody Croyle. He's Tyler Palco played a little bit as well. Tyler Palco. Who, who did I say? Uh, Tyler, uh, I don't remember. Tyler Thigpen. Yeah. Who but was I think also, he did. I he think was he did. also I think he on the Chiefs, was, yeah. yeah. Uh, from Coastal Carolina. Yes, yep. And I believe he was like the first quarterback of that program. Yep. Like they just started up when he was there. So, uh, yeah, so better quarterback right now, Alex Smith. He's probably going to be the second best quarterback in the division because I think Phillip Rivers is awful and Carson yep. Palmer is pretty much the same every year. Yeah. I like, I like the deal for both teams, I think. San Fran, you get two more picks in the second round. Make that count. Strengthen your roster a little bit more. The Chiefs have a pretty good roster. A lot of talent on that roster. Some good players in some good positions. Pro bowlers. Yeah, exactly. They had a good amount of pro bowlers. Defense is pretty decent. Getting better each year. They're still very young, but they have some players there. Offensively, you got a great running back. Dexter McCluster is a nice third down change of pace running back. You got a couple good receivers. Nice tight end if he can stay healthy in Moyaki. So you got to like the move that they're at least trying to upgrade the quarterback position, which has been abysmal for them. And like you said, I don't think Alex Smith is going to come in and throw you throw 300 yards every game or anything close to that. But he could throw for 200, 220, 225, two touchdowns, limit your mistakes, and maybe the Chiefs win seven, eight games, which would be a huge improvement on two wins this year. So I like the deal a lot by the Chiefs. Andy Reid's going to come in, coach him up. Andy Reid can coach quarterbacks. We've seen him do it in his system. Michael Vick, Kevin Cobb. Donovan McNabb to an extent because we saw McNabb leave and he was awful. So I think Smith could have a nice year. He's not going to be a top 10 quarterback. Now probably won't be top 15, but good enough to win the Chiefs some games. AFC West with Peyton Manning. You never know how he's going to play again. So you you don't. I don't think they're going to win the division, but could be in the mix for a wild card spot if they if Smith plays well. He's got to play well. Obviously not great, but just well. Also, this means who knows when a quarterback is going to be taken. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting draft for sure. We could see the quarterback position really slip this year. Left tackles, defensive ends all over the place in this draft. I've been hearing guards. Yeah. Even. So, it'll be crazy to see what happens. Alrighty. So, 
sticking with the quarterback position as well, if you guys remember Pat White, the former West Virginia phenom quarterback. Phenom. Good not word. a great passer. Second round pick by the Dolphins. He's eyeing a comeback to the NFL. What do you think? Can this thing work? No, it's not going to work. Yeah. I'll tell you why it's not. It's, it's just, when do these things ever work? Comebacks, first of all, comebacks. Comebacks don't work. Yep. When was the last time somebody came back yeah. that wasn't named Michael Vick? Yep. Even before Michael Vick. Yep. Nobody, nobody comes back in the NFL. Another thing, this guy's not a quarterback. Where are we going to put this guy? These quarterbacks don't do anything except for Antoine Randall, really. Yeah. He's the only guy that's a quarterback that can play like wide receiver. Heinz Ward, too. Uh, Matt Jones was good for a few years until he started doing drugs or something. What yeah. was his deal? Uh, well, he was. I think he was using drugs, selling drugs, and he wasn't that good. He was all right. He was he also on the right. Arkansas men's basketball team. Yes. You got to you gotta like those dual yep. guys yep. That, that say football and basketball Julius Peppers. are for me. Julius Peppers. Julius for a Peppers, D Nab. Yep. D Nab. One of the all timers. Curry as well, same team, uh, with Julius Peppers. Yep. Both two way players. I could I could think of some more, but I'm not going to. Uh, Dave Winfield, baseball, football, and basketball. Yep, that's impressive. Okay, well we'll move on from from that. So yeah, the comeback's not going to work. I don't think a team is even going to sign this guy. Yeah. He's going to have to do like we did with the Jamarcus Russell comeback. He's going to have to do a tour in Canada, and he's going to have to do a tour in the European Football League or something. At least Canada at first. Just going. They'll probably like him. In, he's an exciting guy who can get these Canadian fans riled up. Use the width of the field, you know? Yep. Well, I think with Colin Kaepernick coming coming in this year, bringing that, that read option look, Pat White, pretty similar, not as big and strong as Kaepernick, but he is, a, he is, let's not forget, Pat White had a pretty good arm. He could really zip it. Guy was a baseball prospect. Has a cannon on that left he arm. He also retired to play baseball. Yes. Was initially drafted in baseball first at a Daphne everyone's, High School. Everyone's drafted. Not Daphne every, Alabama? Not everyone. Yes, not everyone's drafted were, in baseball. You know who, why I know Daphne, Alabama? Two a days, yep. Hoover's team they yep. got to play in the finals. So, guy can sling it. Guy can put it in a running back's chest, pull it, keep it on the run, make some plays. Because when he was drafted, he was going to be a Wildcat guy. That didn't work. The Wildcat didn't work for all these years. Now, read option coming in the NFL. Maybe, just maybe, there's a team that says, we'll take a little risk. We're not going to sign you for big money. We'll see what you can do uh, in preseason. I don't think it's going to work. I think he's get like you said. I think he's going to end up either north of the border, probably north of the border is where he's going to go. Imagine but, if he tries a baseball comeback after this too. But I think I think a team's going to say Kaepernick worked. Teams are struggling with that. Russell Wilson, we'll roll the dice a little bit with this. Let's see what happens. Dude, they probably MLB Network probably didn't ask this guy to be on the next knuckler. Probably That's did why not. He's got to make an uh, NFL comeback. Probably not. Next topic. So the combine just finished up. Interesting event. We talked about the Combine last year. What are your thoughts coming out of this Combine? As We've, we've heard a couple different things thoughts, as we're moving forward. Thoughts really haven't changed much in the Combine. I think it's not a waste of time, but I just don't like how a player's stock can rise or fall so much on five little drills. He's going to have his pro day. He's going to have the same drills there. So I just, I just don't get the hype. The only thing about it is it keeps NFL fans invested into the NFL in late February before, just a little bit of time before the draft starts. You know, the draft's two months yeah. away, but it keeps us keeps us talking about the NFL. I really don't care. Yeah. I, I don't care. I didn't watch hardly any. I think I, yeah, I pretty much only watched it when I was forced to. Yeah, I mean, I, I think some of the things, some of, this, the, some of these things are, are kind of important, not obviously overriding factors, but I can see how guys slide around. The drastic drops and drastic rises to me don't make any sense, but I think shuffling guys a few spots – after a few drills, if, if you had two guys who on tape were close, one guy showed you that he has better quickness, agility there, then maybe you move him ahead, depending on what you're looking for. But So it makes some sense. That when you see guys go from like a top five pick to like the end of the first round, then it's like, this is ridiculous. And when you see guys come out of nowhere, like Don Terry Poe last year, who actually had a decent rookie season, not tremendous for Casey, but could be a nice player moving forward. When you see guys come out of nowhere into the top ten, you go, that's idiotic. But the combine... It's an interesting event. It's the most interesting event in sports. Next to probably the, not not interesting, sort of intriguing in the sense that it's not really a sport. Same with the NFL draft. The NFL turns really unsport events into must-watch television. 
I'll tell you the best thing about the NFL Combine. You want to hear it? Yeah. It's when they show the old school Tom Brady highlights. Yeah. That's the best part. They show Tom no, Brady. No, the best part is when they have Eisen run the 40, and then they superimpose him over other guys running the 40 in like four seconds. Yeah. And he's I, I, like 30 no, yards behind. That's always great. I'm still with my best part with Brady. Yeah. Then they show him well, run. Like Eisen probably could have beat Brady when he was in the uh, NFL Combine. Brady was uh, that slow. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. But Brady was really, really slow. Yeah. All his know. drills. It was so. like, this guy is awful. It was great then because they didn't have the tight, the tight yep, it was uh, just Under Armour. It was like t-shirts and shorts. Yep. So that was even better. All right. All right, Warehouse. So the Olympics are about one year away. Yep. Pretty much one year away. And hockey is one of the biggest sports. NHL players have been a part of the last four Winter Olympics, but we don't know if they're going to be a part of it next year. Should the NHL allow its players to compete yes. in Sochi? Yes. Yes. How great was the Olympic hockey tournament last year. It was it, unbelievable. It, it was phenomenal. It was the must-watch event. You get the best guys in the world playing against each, against each other. And the USA is good, but they're always kind of the underdog. In that sense, you know, Canada, Russia. I mean, we're probably about even with Russia, but maybe you give a slight edge to Russia. Canada, obviously, you think they're the best. So, And especially because it was in Canada. A lot of intensity. It was great. The hockey games were actually interesting, fun to watch. So I, I think you got to keep the NHL NHL guys in. I think, you know, obviously it's a cool sentiment when you have kind of amateur guys doing it. But I want to see, and this is, I, I said this about soccer as well. I want to see the best guys playing in these events. Make the really really bring out the best in the sport, highlight the sport, and you know get get behind. Especially because it's hard to watch the NHL. And sometimes is that guy American? Is he Canadian? Do I know? Should I do? You know that situation. Yep. There, you know, this guy's American. That guy's Canadian. Root for your American, uh, your American team. Plain and simple. Yeah, the last Olympic tournament was just, just tremendous. Like I couldn't get enough of the thing. Yeah. Especially because the U.S. had a good team too. Yep. Plus they were grouped with Can uh, with Canada. This time next year they're grouped with Russia yep. again with the home team. So another yep. home battle with It'll the be Russians. Great. Which will be a great matchup if it's NHL players. If it's yeah, if it's cares? college players, I don't really care. They already have a tournament for that. It's called the U twenties. Get these college kids yep. out. Which the United States actually won this year. So I did maybe not, I didn't we probably have a better chance to win the gold medal yeah. if there's if there's twenty year old kids playing in this thing. But the NHL players, like I said, the more the merrier to me. Yeah. Plus you gotta get your best athletes here. The, when we did our Olympic PTR, the only sport I said that shouldn't have pro athletes is boxing. Yeah. Hockey is different than is, is much different than boxing. Yep. I mean, it's not it's not uh, promoters aren't involved at all. So keep hockey the way it was in 2010. NHL players there. I wish there was more games. You know, they got yeah. rid of some games because like the NHL yep. complained. We don't like Gary Bettman anyways. So why do yeah. we like? But well, he has the final say if they're gonna go or not. Yeah. So we should just say screw they didn't Bettman. have to play a full season this year, so they should be pretty fresh this time next year. So well, they're Let gonna have to, they're gonna have to squeeze the schedule in because they're gonna have the whole month of February off. There's no NHL All-Star game ever. You know? If you're NBC, you're pushing for that. You want the NHL in, too. You're... Thoughts on Pierre Maguire between the glass? Um, Can't get annoying at times, but I think he's all right. I like Pierre Maguire. Everyone hates him. I didn't say I Pierre Maguire him. I went to Hobart, graduated yep. from Hobart College, which is Rhode Island College's opponent yep. this weekend. Hit the game up, join the Anchorheads, 650 body paint rendezvous. Steve Roberts tweeted a picture of a high school fan section in the Murray Center yesterday. Crushed anything Rick I think can even produce, let's be honest. I'll have to check that out. Next topic. Warehouse. T it. I think tomorrow the thing starts, March 2nd, yep. but I think the games are in our time start tonight over in Asia. The World Baseball Classic is back. Was in 2009 was the last tournament. Japan has won the last two. Dice Game Matsuzaka has been the MVP of the last two, the only two. Are you excited about it? Well, let's go 1 to 10. You want to go 1 to 10? Yeah, I'm going 0. Going 0. Most of the time, anything baseball related is sub three, <laughs> and then this specifically, big zero. I could care less. I would rather watch the Little League World Series than watch the World Baseball Classic. It's uninteresting. I, I haven't. I've never watched a World Baseball Classic game. Probably won't ever do it unless someone says you got to do this. Then, then I will. But other than that, zero excitement. It just doesn't have any of that interesting national, international competition. The the spirit of being one country versus another that's all that's always great it i just feel like it doesn't have it and it's just not interesting sorry well well 
I, I'm a big fan of it. If, yeah. if I'm if I have a chip in my hand, I'm dipping that and getting a lot of sauce out of it. Eight and a half is where I'm going with this thing. I don't know how that analogy <laughs> made any sense. <laughs> oh, I've been in a chip and dip mood for yeah, like the no. last semester. So yeah. yeah. But I'm a big fan, as you might be able to tell. I actually went to the World Baseball Classic 2009, USA Canada. Great time. Body painted there, but my body paint comrades were Neds. The only one who wanted to do it was Ryan Eaton, and we could have spelled yo. Why? Yep. Uh, why? Uh, why yo? Yep. Because we had uke. Yep. And one of my friends ditched, so we we're gonna do two O's and two U's, because that would have been awesome. So we had to do uke with an exclamation point. Yeah. We had six people, only five body painters. Regardless, one Asian lady there loved us. Yeah, uke. <laughs> All right. Uh, yep. Anyways, anyways, yep. Yep. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm a big fan of the World Baseball Classic. Anything international sports related is, yeah. something, is, is something that's right This doesn't alley. have it, though. I don't it, know. It's not in America, and that's because the best players don't do it. A lot of clubs don't like their players doing it. You're going to see the uh, the U.S. rotation is just full of garbage, pretty much. I mean, they got some decent guys in there, but they could have a great rotation. Baseball clubs are such pansies with their players. Oh, oh it's the, Red Sox, the Red oh. Sox should be pansies because Dice Game at Suzaka is awful every year. He does it. Then you get other guys in there like Mike Timlin. Thanks for that awful season in 2006, buddy. Regardless, uh, I'm a big fan of the tournament. It's huge in Asia. Huge. I believe Yeah, I believe Enormous. That. I believe Did that. you hear about the Taiwan-Korea uh, umpire scandal? No. Oh, yeah. I think uh, the tournament's being taken place in Taiwan, and the Korean team was practicing like a week ago. Yeah. And supposedly they had these oh, Taiwanese, didn't hear that. Didn't Taiwanese hear that. umpires, yep. Yep. spies, yep. going to check out their practice. Yep. Just great. Just great. Uh, but I think the U.S. is going to take it this year. They got a great lineup. They got the best team out of anybody, I think. A lot of that's the thing with the, the tournament is not the best players compete. So why yeah. should I care? But yeah. I'm just such an international sports junkie that I do care, and I actually care about this way more than a Red Sox season. Yeah, tell okay. you that. Okay. Don't care at all about the Red Sox right now. Yeah, I'm all I would for have. The World I would also, well, also my Sox season would be a zero as well. So my Sox season would probably be sub five, but at the World Baseball Classic, eight and a half. Okay. I might even score some of these games. I'm that excited. All right. That's interesting. I, I think I scored in 09. I know the game I was at, I scored. Which, All right. Which is interesting because you have, like, people are still working for spring training, so you get, like, seven pitches a game. Yeah. So you're just really filling that thing out. All right. Let's, let's move on to the I next was getting topic excited. Here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could have continued on my yeah, World Baseball no. Classic. We got the same. I'm pretty sure we've had the same graphic up the last three slides. That's my bad. Anyways. <laughs> favorite referee outfit. That was supposed to be a boxing referee. Yeah. With the, uh, with the bow tie, yeah, long well, sleeve, well, blue button-up. I'll explain because the boxing referee is my favorite okay, outfit. Okay, okay. You get, see, football refs, I don't like the outfits. The, the stupid sh- new shirts they got, don't like them at all. I like the college referee outfits in football. Baseball, umpires, they can switch between the teal and the black. Not a bad look. Basketball, I think those in the NBA are just hideous. NHL have the classic zebra stripes. But boxing has the best official outfits, and I'll tell you. The bow tie, yeah. with you can either you can either go... Long uh, shirt or short shirt, but a lot of guys, when they go short sleeve, the sleeves are like down to here. Yeah. Huge, enormous shirts. Then you got the patch right here on the, sh- on the guy. Yeah. Plus, you got the rubber gloves in case somebody has cuts. Keep yeah. your hands yeah. clean. Yeah. Yeah. And also about these guys, a lot of these refs um, hike their pants up really high. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. this yeah. is great. This is just great. Plus, it's also great because you actually get to hear the refs talk because there's speakers at these boxing matches. So the ref will be like, all right, I'm gonna give you ten. Are you good? Are you good? And then they'll wave it off and they'll like hug the hug yeah. the boxer to keep them up. Yeah. It's just great. The referees that doesn't have to really do with the outfit. Yeah. Okay. But it's just a, it's just why the referees rock in boxing. Yeah, I like. Uh, I'm just a classic zebras guy because zebras is a great nickname. And when you think ref, you just think black and white stripes, black pants. I like to keep it simple. Um, I'll probably go. I prefer basketball because those guys always have like the dumbest, tightest. T-shirt tops on in the basket. I don't know why. NBA or college. In just about any any basketball ref I've ever seen, those guys never wear baggy shirts. They always have skin tight, like they painted those shirts on. Remember, pre-game. remember the guy who really yeah, who had that the boxing was, that's pants who I was thinking. Yeah, he, he was at like right here is where his his belt buckle was was probably right at his chest. Trousers. Really rocking those things. So I like I like any any ref. Give me the zebra stripes. Keep it simple. I like the outfit most of the time. I don't like the job they're doing. Let's be honest. The, the stupidest officials are tennis, and my second favorite yeah. is soccer because they change the color yes. of according to the team's jerseys. And they wear the socks. Yes. And they wear cleats, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> that is tr- that is true. Do they wear shin pads? I don't know if they have shin pads on or not, but they have the socks, yes, which yes, is just yes, hilarious. Yes, yes, yes. Next, next topic. Final topic. Final topic on Throwback Thursday. 
I didn't chase the graphic again. Oh, uh, boy. That's what happens when you do them right, right before the show starts. Eh, Anyways. At least they're spread out today, yeah. so, like, your head doesn't get cut yeah, off. Yeah, we're, we're, we're... Or mine. Mine usually gets cut off by the hashtag. One one thing at a time. We'll, we'll get better. Next. So, final. That is great. <laughs> least... Well, there's a few Boston athletes in there, so... Least favorite Boston athlete. Um, My least favorite Boston athlete. We don't really know why this topic came to us. We are sort of struggling for topics. Yeah, not a great week. Not, not a tremendous week by any means. So... I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know, I don't really hate anybody on the Bruins. I don't hate any athlete, to be honest. Yeah. I don't really dislike anybody on the Bruins. I don't really dislike anyone on the Celtics. I kind of dislike Brandon Spikes. Okay. But my least favorite is a Red Sox relief pitcher named Alfredo Aceves. Okay, yeah. Guy complains all the time. Yeah. Just complain, complain, complain. Can we release this guy? Because he's not even good on the field, really. We can definitely do without his 13 blown saves. And just keeps complaining. Buddy. You want us to release you? How about we do that? Good luck finding a new team. Which he'll find a new team, no problem. Yeah, yeah. He wears number 91 because of Dennis Rodman. That's pretty sweet. It's pretty Dennis vocal. Rodman spending some time in North Korea with Kim Kim Jong-un, allegedly. So yes. So, good for Dennis Rodman. Um, my least favorite Boston athlete, athlete, we talked about this guy earlier. It's got to be TB12. First of all, wears the TB12 hat all the time. You're an idiot. Put a Pats hat on. Second, guy always likes to act like he's the underdog. This everyman story. You live in the biggest house on planet Earth. With your supermodel wife. You don't relate to anyone, buddy. You've won Super Bowls. Let's get this underdog thing off, like, out of here, please. How about you win again? Just focus on that. Haven't you, you never, seen the Brady Six? You barely ever, I have, and it was good. But you never ever see this guy, you never hear this guy in the off season. which I don't know why that gets me mad, but it does. Like, I just want to see him do an interview, just talk to people, be out saying things. Like, you hear Drew Brees, those guys are on Twitter and things of that nature, and you, you kind of get a sense they seem like regular Joes. Like, Drew Brees... Seems like a really regular guy. Like he's like six foot one, has a few kids, got like the scar on his face. Like he just seems like regular Joe. Like you could drink a beer with Drew Brees. Brady probably drinks wine. First off, probably, probably he's not a beer. He's a wine guy. Red probably. wine from like nineteen twenty something. He's probably is he wearing a, is he wearing a beret when he? he his wine? I wouldn't doubt. He probably has a robe on. Probably okay. has one of those drinking robes or whatever. Sitting next to his fireplace. Drinking a stupid red wine like an idiot. Is he, is he holding the cup like, like a this? pansy <laughs> and just? Oh well, I gotta go play football what in a few of slip, months. Is he is he winning the Australian Uggs? Yeah, the, pro- oh yeah, I, I live in California. Time. Uggs, wine. Don't want to hang out with Tom Brady. Don't want to see him at Toby Keith's. I love this bar and grill. <laughs> Simple as that. Imagine. Imagine he, well, he would never drinks. go there. He would never go there. Imagine he would never the free go drinks Tom Brady. He would never go. He would never go. He wouldn't go. Wouldn't go. Wouldn't go. They don't have his wine there. Jeez. Easy. He wouldn't go. He wouldn't drink out of a mason jar. Would he? No. Uh, no. I'm sure no. he has before. I think no. he's drinking out of a mason jar at one time in his yeah, life. Yeah, well, that was a long time, many moons ago. And now all of a sudden, guy's drinking out of goblets. Was he ever an average wines. show? In college, yes. Very average. The guy could barely start at Michigan. So very average. But he always, he, he kind of makes it seem like, oh, I haven't changed with us. Guy has changed. Guy has changed. We all change. but He's my favorite Boston athlete and I guess when you're a lot of people's favorites, you're also a lot of their least favorite. That's very That's true. why people are Cowboys fans, and a lot of people aren't Cowboys fans. Yep. Same said for the Patriots. A lot of people hate the 31, Patriots. 31 teams hate the Patriots. According to Terrell Suggs, that is true, and I wouldn't doubt that. So that's all we got for you today, 10 topics. As always, want to thank Milka Tolich, Sam Allen, Matt Furtado, A.J. Clark, Tom Lima, Everyone here at Anchor TV, another good um, show. Also, another plug, Anchor Heads, Saturday, in the stands, 6.50, if you want to body paint. Probably you don't should have to move body the body paint earlier than 6.50, yeah, so, we, that, so we don't have to rush. Let's body paint it before. You don't have to body paint it, though, if you want to if you Yeah, want to if cheer. you don't want to body paint, don't body paint. Just come in a section, make noise. Like, I, oh, I, I, don't, I can't even, I don't have words to describe why people wouldn't want to join us, but... Maybe we're intimidating. Some people are, are nets. We're Maybe. not intimidated. What you... Maybe they see Jared Ware and are like, that kid is ripped. Yeah, I don't, wanna, I don't, no, do I don't think anyone's singing that. <laughs> Maybe about Ryan Eaton. Maybe about Ryan Eaton. Yeah, all right. Yes. All right. Tip your waiters. Catch you guys later.